Hi, and welcome to question eight of the 2022 paper one, Leaving Zero Ordinary Level. So as always, if you want to copy the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at gmail, shanetroy at gmail.com. And please click like and subscribe to get access to more videos. So we're looking at question eight here, and let's read through it. So Jessica is a scientist, and Jessica is making up a solution of acid. Now she has two different bottles, each with the following concentration of the acid. So if you're not familiar with chemistry or I suppose junior research science, an acid is a corrosive substance that donates protons, and that's what makes it reactive. And I suppose the opposite of an acid is a base. Um, it doesn't really matter what it is for this particular question. We're dealing with percentages here. So we have a bottle that's fairly concentrated at 12% and a second bottle B that's lower concentration of 5%. Okay, fair enough. So just visualize that, maybe read the question again, just to get a handle on what's happening. And then um, they give us a, actually a bit of a description, this is great. This means that, for example, in every 100 mils of liquid in bottle A, there are 12 milliliters of acid. So 12% of 100 mils is 12 mils. Now part one says, work out how many mils of acid are there in 200 mils of liquid from bottle A. So there's a number of ways of approaching this, and I'm going to do it just by making the statement. So 100 mils, they tell me this, okay, uh, is equal to um, 12 mils of acid. Okay, excuse my bad writing. Well, if that statement is what they told me, well, then 200 mils, okay, isn't it just twice that? Okay, so it'd be 24 mils of acid. And again, you could have just done that, uh, and, and I suppose an alternative way would be to get 200 times 12%. Put it through the calculator, you would have got 24 mils. Now, part two then is saying that Jessica mixes 200 mils of liquid from bottle A with 300 mils of liquid from bottle B. Okay, so she's mixing two. I mean, you draw this. Okay, bottle A um, is 200 mils. Okay, and then bottle B is a little bit bigger. Okay, and that's 300 mils. So even when drawing that, I'm kind of going, well, if you combine the two of them, don't I have 500 mils? And right there, I have my attempt. Okay, so it says work out the overall concentration of the acid in Jessica's mixture and work out your answer as a percentage. So that's something there, okay? But if we go, well, look, how much acid is there in the 200 mils of bottle A? Now, I know from the top there that that is 24 mils, okay? But I could do the calculation again. So it's 200 by 12%, okay? And that's 24 mils. And then the 300 mils of bottle B, so it's 300 mils by 5%. And let me just work that out. Should be 15. I should always check. Um, so 300 by 5. Now my percent button is up here. So 5%. Now you could do that by 5 over 100, make the fraction, or pi 0.05 and it's 15. Okay. So let me record that calculation answer. So that's 15 mils. Now I can tell there that I suppose the total amount of acid is the 24 plus the 15. Again, I should use the calculator, but that's 39 mils. So in the new mixture, okay, there's 39 mils of acid. Okay, now, I probably don't have as much space as I'd like. Over the 500 mils, you combine the two together, okay, and to get a percentage, you multiply by 100. Now, I have the answer on the next page here, so let's just flick to the answer. And we got 7.8%, okay? So that part one and two are pretty nice. I just realized that I didn't have the marks in for part two, so uh, we would have gotten the attempt for finding the 500 mils at the three, which is a pretty good return, um, considering you're given two numbers in the question itself, okay? So I move on now to a part three. Now I've copied this top part here from the question, so it would look different on the actual exam paper. And explain why Jessica could not make a solution 
with a 4% concentration of acid by mixing liquid from bottle A and bottle B. So I suppose, no matter how you look at it, um, if it's even one mil or 100 mils, I'm going to pick 100 just because it's a handy enough number, um, from 100 mils of bottle A, so if I was to say this, now, put the marker back on, so bottle A, one mil or 100 mils is just a different amount, okay, by the 12%, okay, is equal to 12 mils, okay, um, and in bottle B, 100 mils, okay, uh, by the 5% would give me 5 mils, okay. So no matter how I look at it, that 12 plus 5 is going to give me 17. Now, if I'm using 100 mils of both, okay, that's, uh, I'll do the calculation here just to show it, is equal to 200 mils. So a concentration there will be 17 out of 200, and make a percentage multiplied by 100. Okay, we're going to get an answer of, let me just bring my calculator up. So 17 over 200 is equal to that fraction, multiply by 100 to get a percentage. We're getting 8.5%. Okay, so that's 8 Point five percent. Now, excuse my bad writing. I've gone to the end of the of the screen thing there. Um, that's supposed to be a percentage sign. Eight point five is 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 bigger than four percent. Now, I don't I haven't left myself much space here. Um, so that just that's not that's the smallest amount. Now, if I'd use one mil by twelve percent, would it give me what point zero one two or something or point one two? Um mils of um, acid, if I'd used one mil of B, um, it would have given me five mils, no matter how you, you, you shape it up, okay, 8.5% is is bigger than four. It's kind of confusing because, I mean, why couldn't you use, yeah, it, I, I get the answer, but I can see how people could get confused on that, in, in my opinion. Um, now, Part four there says, when she is making another mixture, Jessica makes a mistake in measuring. She wants to measure out 250 mils, but she accidentally measures out 260. Now, right there, I, I see a calculation. 260, okay, take away 250 is equal to 10 mils. Okay, and apologies again for my bad writing. Um, so that's cool, okay. Now, Percentage error, okay, would be the, I suppose we often say, like, the error over the actual um, multiplied by 100, okay? So, error over actual, again, there's different formulas for that, multiplied by 100. Now, the error there was 10 over the actual was 250. Multiplied by 100 gives me an answer of, and I'll just do a cleaner on the next page, okay, gives me an error of 4%, okay? And that's it. So that formula is something you kind of need to know. Um, it's not in the math tables, it's not that I know of, okay? Um, but if you could definitely get the attempt of two marks by just taking the 260, um, take away the 250. And then if you kind of made an effort at dividing it by something, now I could often get confused here with the actual over the like um, over the the mistaken volume, I could have easily done that ten over two sixty multiplied by hundred if I wasn't thinking clearly. Um, but again, I would probably jump up to the three there because my multiplying by hundred would have been correct, and my only error would have been dividing that by two sixty, not the act the the real amount of two fifty. Okay. Now knowing the formula well helps, but I when these formulas I kind of often have to double check myself. So that's part uh, A, part four. Now part uh, A, part B, part one. If a solid is made up of faces with straight edges, then the following statement or identity is often true. So the number of, uh, C is the number of corners, E is the number of edges, F is the number of faces, okay? So then part one says, write down the values of C, E, and F for a cube and show that the values of C minus E plus F equals two. 
So we have to work out how many corners does it have. Now the tenon's got eight edges. And the eight, or say 12 rather, 12 edges would be, um, that's, a, that's an edge there, okay, here. So it's one, two, an edge here, looks like an edge here, that's four, okay. Then an edge here, 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 and then in the background, that's four more. And then the bottom, okay, the sides, and the back of it. So one, two, three, four, and that's where they get the 12. So that's making sense to me, okay. Now let me clear off the fluff there, okay. So the number of corners, what is a corner here? Here, 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 and the one that will be in the back, okay, making the cube shape. So that's all, that's eight. Okay, then the number of faces, now I should probably clear off some of the writing there. Okay, um, the number of faces, now it's, it's worth just counting them up. We have one here, and then coming in the side, one here, one here, coming in the back, come to the bottom. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six faces. Now if we want to prove this statement true, is 8 minus 12 plus 6 equal to 2? Now 8 and 6 is 14, so 14 take 12 is 2. Is 2 equal to 2? Verified. Okay. And that seems to be it. So five marks for that. Um, if you figured out what the shape was, um, Probably get the number of corners is probably easier. Number of faces is something that may elude people if you don't understand what that language is actually trying to get across. Now, 8B part 2 should be next. That's just the answer in the notes. Now, part 2 says each of the faces of a different solid is in the shape of a triangle of area 5 centimeters squared. Okay. Now, maybe draw it and try to get some attempts from that. But it says this solid has 12 corners and 30 edges and the statement seems to be true for it. It says work out the surface area of the solid. This sounds challenging. Now this can put the fear of God in people but it does tell me the statement that um, one face okay, is equal to 5 cm squared. And I suppose acknowledging that might get the attempt. It just depends on how the mark scheme is applied that year. But I'm going to write out my statement. C minus E plus F is equal to 2. And C, can I work with this? And There's three unknowns here, so it's not solvable. Until I realize that, sure, I know C is 12. I was told that. I'm told that E is equal to 20. So F is, I don't know. So I can now practice my substitution skill. Instead of C, I put 12. Instead of E, I put 20. So if I see here now, okay, this is an equation of only one unknown. So 12 take away 20 is negative 18 plus F is equal to 2, not plus 2, equal to 2. Sorry, my bad. And this is the equation of one unknown, so I can solve this. And I can get rid of the 18 um, by adding 18 to it. If I do the opposite of something, I can get rid of it. Now, if I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other. Okay, I make a calculation here. Minus 18 plus 18 is the same thing as 18 minus 18, but they're going to go no matter how you look at it. So I'm left with f is equal to 2 plus 18 is 20. Now, if I now realize that I said one face is equal to 5, so what's 20 face, faces? Well, I have to multiply by 20. If I do it to one side of the equation, I have to do it to both. So 20 faces is equal to 5 times 20 is, I think it's 100. 100 centimeters squared. That's my answer. Now, probably should box it. If I can draw a box, or a rectangle, rather. Um, because, just to make a stand out, in a way, in a way I've, I've went, I, my answer should probably be down at the bottom. And I suppose a practical thing from having graded these things myself, sometimes when you're in a hurry or you're tired or whatever, you, you, if the answer's clearly laid out uh, and it's right, it, it just, it's, it's easier to get the marks and, and avoid the errors that inevitably happen because people are human. So that's a good 10 marks there. So that's B part two. Now the answer here done out um, cleaner. Now the last one there in 8B part three says, 
the surface of a third solid, I'm getting bored with these solids, is made up of, of H hexagons, so six sided. Now maybe I should write that in there. Okay, six sided. And P pentagons, which are five sided. Now I mightn't actually need to know that, but you know, it could get you the attempt by, it is, I suppose, arguably a correct, relevant uh, piece of information. Now, if I look at this, this is an algebraic statement. I know that because it's got an equation, so the rules of algebra would apply. This would be an algebraic fraction here and here, so I probably should write it out, but I'm going to go to the answer on the next page, okay, and work down just because it's tighter and cleaner. Now, if I look at this, the one thing on this first line that I don't like is the fact that there's a fraction, okay? Now, what I could do is multiply both sides by, uh, well, by three, so multiply everything by three, all the way across, and then cancel the three, and then multiply by two to get rid of this. But I can do that using a factor of three um, and two, not a factor, but something that both three and two can divide into. And I'm going to use the lowest common, and that's six. So if I multiply across by six, this six and the three are going to interact. Okay. Now, if I multiply six in one term, I have to multiply by six the whole way across, and that's a fundamental thing in algebra. Very easy to forget to do that to everything, okay? Now, it looks like I've created a horrible situation, but six divided by three is going to cancel, and that's going to be left with a two. So I'm going to multiply this first thing by two. Second here, the six and the two will, will, will react or cancel. You're going to have to multiply all that by three, okay, all this little chunk here. Now, the by six here all the way across is, is handy enough. So if I do that then, two by six h is 12 h. 2 by 5p is 10p. Now, 3 by 6h is actually negative. So negative 6h by 3 is negative 18h. Negative 5p by 3 is negative 15p. Okay, so that, this is a bit tricky, that middle one there, because the minus, okay, it's minus times 6h times 3, minus times 5p times 3, and that's where I got those two values. Now, 6 by h is just 6h, 6 by p is just 6p, then 2 by 6 is 12. So a lot going on there. It's fairly you know, full-on algebra. Um, can be very difficult for people. But for a lot of people who are, I suppose, have practiced their algebra, this is bread and butter stuff. So in a way, if you see this, don't just take your time. You know how to do it. Follow the consistent rules of algebra, and you should get there. Now let's clean it off. So we're now moving from this line here to the next line. So we... we, we add like terms. So I see a 12h, uh, I see an 18h, and I see a 6h. Now, if I add them together, so actually all I'm doing here is adding the 12h to the 6h to get 18h. Um, I haven't done that into the p, okay, that stays. The minus 18h, that stays. The minus 15p stays. So all I've really done is combine the h's in this step, okay. So everything else stays the same. Now, there's a big calculation here. 18h take away 18h cancels. Okay. Now, the 10p, the p's can add, they're the like term. So 10p take away 15p is negative 5p, plus 6p is the same thing as 1p. Now, I often do this in my head. It's going to, I owe someone 10 euro, um, or somebody owes me 10 euro, they pay me 15, so that I'm positive, like I actually owe is probably the best thing. I owe somebody 15 euro, okay, I pay them back 10, okay, and then I pay them six, and I have one credit. Okay, now again, I might be a bit ham-fisted there, but in a way, this is pretty handy, because it worked out nicely in that one P is equal to the, the right-hand side, which is 12. So my answer is P is equal to 12. Hope I haven't confused things there in the end. What having to go with this yourself, even though we've just done it, see, can you recreate that? Um, and that'll give you the confidence if something like this does come up. Um, what they're really testing is your ability to manipulate algebraic fractions. And they're couching it in a different language, okay? Um, that can, you know, in a sense, put you off. Even from my experience, things like this, H and P are both elements of N, means they're natural numbers, okay? So they're positive whole numbers, which you have to be, like, if you think about it, okay? Um, so that can just be off-putting. I think that's the end of question eight. Okay, so as always, if you want to copy the notes I'm working on, please send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com and I'll send them off to you. 
And if you like and subscribe, you'll get access to more playlists. Okay, see you on question nine.